First Chronicles 29. Interesting little note here. David is found a hundred, a thousand and eighty-five times in the Bible, and David's plural, uh, not plural. David's as possession, fifty-four times in the Bible. Furthermore, David the king said unto all the congregation, addressing everybody, Solomon, my son, whom alone God has chosen, there's no other is yet young and tender and the work is great for the palace now look it's called a palace now it's not for man but for the lord god and you realize this house that Solomon's going to build no one's going to sleep in it there are no bathrooms there are no bedrooms there's closet areas there's storage areas there's the courtyard there's the most holy place there's the the holy place and david says it's a palace it's where god abides in the nation of israel in the most holy place now i have prepared all my might for the house of my god and all he can do is provide the gold for things to be made of gold and the silver for things silver and the brass for the things brass and the iron for the things of iron for the wood of for things of wood onyx stones for stones to be set glistering now this is the first time this word shows up and it only shows up in Luke 9 29 glistering stones and let's take this word and look at Luke 9 29 because it's interesting David says glistering stones in the gospel of Luke chapter 9 is the only other place you find this word 9 29 and look and the reference that it has I'm in eight. I'm in the wrong chapter. I'm like, whoa, that's not correct. Now watch this, Luke 9, 29. And this is Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Where Moses and Elijah are going to show up with Peter, James, and John who are asleep. And he, as he prayed, they fashioned on his countenance, this is Peter, James, and John, was altered. His face has been altered. And his raiment was white and glistering. And that's the second and last place that word shows up besides where we are. In First Chronicles 29. So the raiment of Jesus Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration is like a stone, a gem that is just brilliant. And the Bible says fine linen is the righteous, righteousness of the same. And if we're going to get that same clothing as Jesus is going to get, we're going to sparkle. And I believe Bunyan puts in the, uh, uh, I can never remember, uh, Pilgrim's Progress, Progress, I think he puts it as a shiny one. And when you hear the story of the empty tomb, when Mary comes, I believe it says they were angels of light. Yes, we will have to get new eyeballs. Or if we were to go with the eyeballs we have today into heaven, the glory of God, we'd blow them every time. We couldn't handle the color. And David says these stones are to be brilliant. And inside that breastplate is the Urim and Thurim, and somehow those things would light up and spell out. Now, that Urim and Thurim is of God of holiness. Can you imagine the color that those stones on the breastplate will eliminate? As David called for one of his times in his life, said he sought the ephod. God is in brilliance of color. 
Look at the animal kingdom. Look at these new animals they're finding. And when they take their their uh, their submarines and go deep in the ocean, they're finding these beautiful colored fish. You see these pictures of, of the, the satellites and um, oh, Hubble. Hubble. Who on earth is all that color for? I've seen these pictures of these stars and, and galaxies and the planets, and they're just absolutely good. We have a God of color. Wait till we get to New Jerusalem when the gates and the cities are garnished with these stones. As Satan was once a brilliant of color, as an angel of light, the Bible says in Corinthians. And then if you're to reject God, his Savior, Jesus Christ, you're going to a place of darkness. There is so much to come by the glory of God. And David says glistering, that word, that important word, only shows up with, G not Jesus, his clothes. We're going to get clothes like that. And diverse colors, that means all different colors. I would think if you get a box, of, the biggest box of crayons you can get and open it up, that'd be how many colors there would be in heaven, if not more. And all manner of precious stones. And marble. That's the first time that word shows up. Marble. Stones in abundance. <laughs> Man, you don't have just a bag of marbles. He's got abundance of them. Can you imagine what this place looked like? And how it decayed over the years with sin. Moreover, you mean there's more, David? Because I have set my affliction, that's the first time that word shows up. Affection, excuse me, affliction. On the house of my God. How many wives did David have? I lost count. There was a woman there washing herself. Oh, I gotta have her. Call her. And he calls out the house of God. Our emotions, our care should go to the Lord Jesus Christ, not a building. And when people set, set their uh, affliction on a building, you're in the Old Testament. You're not upon Jesus Christ. I have of my own proper good of gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my God, it's not built yet, over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house. Now it's a holy house. Some people think their buildings are a holy house. God don't dwell in them. Even 3,000 talents of gold, of the gold of Ophir, which is mentioned as a very good gold, 7,000 talents of refined silver to overlay the walls of the house with all. I don't read anywhere where, where Solomon overlaid that with silver. It may have. I read he overlaid it with gold. Silver, pre, silver in the Bible pictures redemption. Gold pictures king, deity, God, royalty. The gold for things of gold. It's got to be important. It's been repeated and it's been repeated in other chapters. And the silver for things of silver. And for all men or work to be made by the hands of the artificer, the only other place that word shows up is 2 Chronicles 34, 11. That's the first place. And this is one of those words, only two other places. 2 Chronicles 34, 11. That's somebody who makes something. And who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord? Now look at that. There David had like an, an altar call. All right, who else is going to come forth and give what I've given? And addition. And the answer is, who is going to consecrate his service this day to the Lord? Then the chief of the fathers and the princes of the tribes of Israel, and the captains of thousands and hundreds, and the rulers of the kings were offered willingly. They stepped up and said, we will. This is what I've given to the Lord. Who, will, who else would add to it? And they step up. And gave for the service of the house of, of God of gold 5,000 talents and 10,000. That would be 15,000. Drams. That's the first time that word shows up. Drams. It's a measurement. 
and they got things I, I don't know it's a measurement and of silver 10,000 talents and of brass 18,000 talents and 100,000 talents of iron and they with whom precious stones were found gave them to the treasure of the house of the Lord by the hand of Jehiel the Gershonite so they're giving gold, they're giving silver, they're giving brass, and they got stones. They're, they're adding to David's supply. So this house of God is not built by Solomon alone. And if you remember it, the thing in the Bible that says, she that tarry by the stuff, he that tarries by the stuff. David can't build it. These, not everybody can build that temple, but they're giving and they have part in it. Not everybody can go on the foreign field, but if you give the bread to the man to go on the foreign field, it's accounted to you. All these people, including David, are going to die one day, and they may die before the temple's built. But they get a record, and it's recorded what they give. Then the people rejoice, for they that offered willingly, how's that? There was no force. There's no, you got to do, you have to do, please do. There's no... 26 announcements by David. David said, all right, who's going to consecrate themselves to service? And they'll just step right up and say, here we are, here we are. This is what I got. Uh, I got two diamonds. That's all I got. Is that good enough, David? That's that's well fine. Uh, I got some gold here, David. I don't have silver. That's fine. David, I got some wood. That's all I got. Hey, we need wood too. I got some nails. I got some iron. That's, that's good. I'll give it all to the Lord. And we find this same giving in, in Corinthians to the Christian. God loves a cheerful giver. You got $2 and you say, I'm going to give $2 to the Lord, but one of them, oh, I could have done something else with that $1. Give the one and keep the one. Cheerfully give those that $2 and what are you going to That woman that gave her two mice, said, she gave it to the Lord. The other people, the rich people, Jesus said, they just threw it in there. This is my abundance. So here I go. And God honored that widow woman in the treasury that she wanted to give. She gave not because she was forced to, but because she wanted to. They offered willingly because with a perfect heart, they offered willingly to the Lord. That's what God wants from us. A contrite heart. Paul writes to the Corinthian church. And it's not just money, it's time. Look, look at iron. Is iron money? No. Pastor, you know, I got some old books here, and they're, they're ministry books, and I don't have no use for them. Can you use use them? And if you look, yeah, I, wow, yeah, I'll give them to you. You're giving to the Lord, you're giving to the pastor. Uh, you got people in church, you know, you may have something in your house that you have no use of. You may have something you have extra of, and you give it to them. It's not money, but it's something that can be used. I know people, when they think about offering and giving to the church right away, they think money. It's not about money. It's time, effort, materials. And David the king who rejoiced with great joy. Now, we're going to conclude this chapter, Lord willing, with David's thanksgiving, his prayer. Solomon steps up and then David's going to die. But I think the second half of this chapter, I think it needs to be broken away from. I think this is to be a good time to break from. 